Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Synology Disk Station DS418. I previously had a Synology 2Bay, the DS218 Plus, but as I was doing some other hardware videos, I plugged in the wrong power cord to it and blew the power supply. So we're gonna to upgrade to the DS418 and always make sure to plug in the right power cord to the back of the units. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, which we'll put in the description below. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna unpackage the DS418, and then we'll get into some of the specs. All right, so this is the box of the DS418. I'm gonna get it opened up here. Okay, so on this side right here, we have the standard power cord. First thing it comes with is the quick installation guide. Comes with two ethernet cables. Looks like about five feet. And then it comes with our power brick. And there are also keys that come with it and I'm gonna assume that's to lock the drive bays. Comes with a little pack of screws as well and this will most likely to be to hold our uh, hard drives down in the bays. And next up, this is our NAS itself. So let's get this taken out of the box. And they have the bottom tape, so we're just gonna rip that apart. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that there's a status, uh, status light, and then we have our four discs. These will be drive indicators. We have a USB 3.0, and then we have our power button below that. Along the top here, these are our four drive bays. If we take a look on the back of the Synology, we have two one gigabit RJ45 ports, and we have this little hole right here, which is a reset button. We also have another USB 3.0. We have our power port, which we'll plug our power cord into. We have two fans on the back, and then we have a Kensington lock. All right, now that we've seen what comes in the box, we need to get the Synology NAS populated with some drives. So we're gonna pop open the drive bay and then pull it out. On the side here, we have fastening panels on both sides, so we need to take that off. And I'm gonna be populating this with four terabyte Iron Wolf drives. So we'll just grab our drive. We wanna make sure this side is facing down, put it in the drive bay, and then push down. Now we have to put the fastening panels back on so we'll put it at the back and then just push in. And our one side is in, we need to do the other side. Now this drive is ready to go, we can place it back into the Synology NAS, push it down and then click over. Now we'll lock the drive bay, we'll place the key in and we'll turn it to the right. And now the bay is locked. So we're, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put the three other hard drives in to these drive bays. All right, now we have our Synology NAS populated with all our hard drives. I'm gonna get this powered up, plugged into my network. We'll go over some of the specs and then we'll get into the initial setup of the DSM. Now that we have our drive bays filled in our Synology DS418, let's look at some of the features. The CPU is a quad core 1.4 gigahertz. The network, we have dual one gigabit LAN ports, which we could put in a link aggregation or we could do a failover. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a separate video. For memory, we have two gigabit DDR4. I was hoping that we were gonna be able to expand this memory, but I believe you could do that in the DS418 plus model. For performance, we have 226 megabits per second and 170 megabits per second sequential read and write. So Synology offers real-time collaboration on your own private cloud. We could stream content to our TV from our Synology NAS. And we also have a few other features. We have Synology Surveillance Station, which I've used before and I do have videos on it. It's a great NVR system. It has desktop backup public cloud integration, DSM UI, which we'll be checking out shortly. It has built-in security tools to show us what is out of date and what needs updating. 
and it also has a complete multimedia solution. So let's go ahead and get into the basic setup of our DS418. So there's a few different ways that we could access our Synology. We could go to find.synology.com or we could go to disk station with port 5000. Also, if we know the IP address of our Synology NAS, we could type that into a web browser and it will come up. Let's just go to findsynology.com and here it's gonna be searching for our Synology devices. And we could see that it's found it. So the server name is disk station. It has an IP of 192.168.10.56. It will show the MAC address, serial number, DSM version, the model type, and the status. And right now it's not installed. So we're gonna go connect. We're gonna to agree to the end user license and press next. And then we're gonna press continue. Now it brings us to our IP address of 192.168.10.56, which is our Synology NAS on port 5000, and we're gonna set it up. So we need to install the DSM, which is the Disk Station Manager, and I'll go install now. All data on the hard disks one, two, three, and four will be removed during the installation. Are you sure you wanna proceed? And I understand that all data on these hard disks will be removed, and I'll press okay. So the disk station will be ready in about 10 minutes. We'll be back once that is finished. DSM is now loaded onto our disk station. We need to fill in the following information, our server name, username, password, and we need to confirm our password. All right, so now we set up Quick Connect. If you don't already have a Quick Connect ID, you could register here. If you already have the Quick Connect ID, we could click this radio button and select our username and password. I'm just gonna skip this step. So if you skip this up, you'll need to do the for, uh, port forwarding to remotely access. I already have a VPN coming into my office, so I'm gonna access it through that and not through Quick Connect, and I'll say yes. And these are all recommended apps that you could download if you want. I'm gonna skip this step. And now we're all set. So we could share my Synology device network location to allow me to locate it via find.synology.com. And I'm not gonna do that, and I'm just gonna press go. At our Synology NAS dashboard, it says Smart Update. From now on, once a new DSM update is ready, your disk station will automatically check if the update patch addresses any issues in your current DSM configuration and services in use and accordingly determine whether to notify of such update. And we'll just say, got it. You could send your device analytics to Synology if you want. I'm just gonna say, no thanks. And then it's gonna run you through some tips. So tip one, access all built-in and installed packages from the main menu. Second tip, it will discover more applications at the Package Center. Package Center is where you're gonna download applications that could run on your DSM, Synology Surveillance Station, and the VPN server. Tip three, this is for our control panel. So this will be where we do our network configuration and we could add different users. So in the top right hand corner here, it's saying security advisor, we recommend enabling security advisor to enhance security of your disk station. And we will enable that and then follow their security best practices. On the bottom, we could see that the system is healthy and it's working. We could see the server name, the IP address of LAN one, I don't have LAN2 plugged in yet, but we will have that in and we'll be putting it in a link aggregation. On the bottom, we could see our resource monitor, so our CPU usage and our RAM usage. And we could also see the network usage at the bottom. So a few things that we'll wanna do is we wanna set a static IP address for this disk station. So I'll go to control panel. I'll click on network. And then we're gonna go to the network interface. We're gonna click on LAN one and then we'll go edit. Right now it's using DHCP, but we wanna use a manual configuration. So I'm still gonna set it at 192.168.10.56 and I'll press okay. We could also set up other users if we wanted some other users to access this NAS. You could go to users and then we could create a new user. Here we could give them a name and I'll just say test for now. We can put in an email and we need to put in a password. Now we've confirmed our password, I'll press next. And you could have this user join certain groups. We could set them as an admin. I'm just gonna set them as user for now and press next. And then you could assign them a shared folder if we had a shared folder. Right now we have nothing shared as this is a brand new setup and I'll press next. This is where we're gonna give them some application permissions. We could give them allow to DSM, deny them to DSM, file station FTP, or any application that we have running. I'll press next. 
We could also set up custom speed limits for them and we'll just leave that at default. Now we're going to confirm our settings and press apply and we have a newly created user. So that's it for this Synology video. This was a basic setup, how to get it up and running and into our DSM. We will do other videos within Synology to show you how to get things up and running. The next video will probably be our link aggregation as well as the security advisor. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.